I would like to welcome you once again to Fix Your Eyes on Jesus. And my name is Annie. I'm your host. And together with us in the studio today, we have a special guest. And his name is Joshua of Messenger. You got it. So, hi, Joshua. Hi, thanks for having me on. It's, it's an honor to be here. Yeah, so you're welcome to Fix Your Eyes on Jesus, and we are looking forward to what the Lord has in store for us today. Amen. So I'd like to welcome you all to brace yourself as we continue to fix our eyes on Jesus, and as we present ourselves to the Lord to help us through this journey of life. Hmm. We are going to start with a prayer. So let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thanksgiving, Lord, we come before you, we submit to you, we offer our hearts to you, our thoughts and everything within us. We welcome your presence, Lord, in our midst and in our hearts, that you may teach us something new from your servant, Joshua, and that you may help us to grow more in the knowledge of you and to have our lives transformed to be just like you. We honor you, we praise you, and we worship you. It is in Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. So once again, Joshua, I would like to welcome you. And just to let all our listeners know that Joshua is an author, a podcast creator, and a host. And I like the podcast name, which is Abundance Encounters. Yes. And Joshua uh, has an online ministry that helps Christians to embrace and encounter a lifestyle like Jesus Christ. So mm-hmm. we are here not just to fix our eyes on Jesus, but we are presenting ourselves to the Lord to use his servant to speak to us about how to embrace and to encounter a lifestyle like that of Jesus, mm-hmm. because this is how we are transformed So we are so delighted to have you, Joshua. Thank you. Just before we begin, I'd like to welcome you to give a brief introduction of uh, your background, please. Yeah, so uh, I had a really fun, I mean, it wasn't fun at the time, but just crazy experience with God, uh, where I was an atheist at 27 years old and um, had a ridiculous encounter with him, a very powerful encounter. And um, it was an open vision. Uh, some some people, it's like you're dreaming, but you're awake. And so, and so, what I was seeing, I uh, was uh, I was basically just seeing into the spirit, and I had no box for that because I was uh, an anti theist, uh, atheist, and um, so. But uh, eventually, in this open vision, um, I see Jesus. And Jesus uh, looks at me, and he knew my my first name. He he didn't even call me Joshua, which is my full name. He called me Josh. So it was this familiar tone that he had. And uh, he looked me right in the eyes, and I saw uh, kindness in his eyes. And it's hard to explain, but there was just such sincere kindness in his eyes. And and I just couldn't believe that, that he, you know, wanted anything to do with me much less like wanted me to to experience salvation um and so he had me set up and i ended up in in a church very quickly and got baptized and um and and all these things just happened but it was like and it was very significant because he came after me you know he the veil was torn in half and sometimes the father comes running out after his son's and so I was one of the lucky ones. And I, I know it happens differently for everyone because he's such a individual God. He just, he loves us so individually. It was just amazing. Um, our God is on a rescue mission and he totally did. He rescued me, a very lost son. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, from, yeah. Wow. Now that's very interesting. And I'm actually curious to know <laughs> to know is that where your journey began like how yeah. have you been brought up where have you been brought up did you ever like have an encounter with christians or oh yeah yeah i will you know god himself is three in one so he's already a community so he cares about community a lot and uh, yeah. that was kind of the first thing he did it was he drove me into the you know just a wonderful church uh, community 
and um, uh, it was it was it was kind of interesting. I'm in, in Southern California, and so uh, he, a friend of mine, I knew he was a preacher, and I, I just I was so hungry. I mean, all, just like that, my hunger for God and for His Word, and just to learn who He was, was birthed within me after I met Jesus, and it kind of changed my life in a lot of ways. But um, so, but uh, there was really only one person I knew that that um, that kind of preached. Uh, the word I was a businessman and this is uh, 17 years ago mm-hmm. and um, so I I just didn't know Christians I didn't I wasn't running in their circles or anything like that mm-hmm. and um, so but I knew this guy and and I knew he wanted to start a business and, it, and I felt like God wanted me to go and spend some time with him mm-hmm. so I knew he had a church service so I, I was like well I'll just go to his church service and so I, I walk up into the front like I'm in a business meeting. You know, I've got my, my suitcase with me. <laughs> Not suitcase, but like briefcase. And mm-hmm. I go up to the front and I don't know church, you know, like the way things are supposed to be. So I, I didn't realize this, but I was asking his family because you go up to our front in the business meeting. And I asked his family to move over. I didn't know who they were. I was, so I could sit on the front row. So just awkward little things like that that were kind of funny. But God, you know, he, he brought me into his house. And I mean, it was so cool. Because like in that first message and God planned this, I I don't think any man could have, but he talked about relationship with Jesus. And that was the message that that he gave. That very first message that I heard from was like uh, that you could have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, I mean, as an atheist, I never thought that that was what could be possible, but I had just had this open vision. So I was like, oh man, you really want this with me. So I'm like in tears and crying like crazy and just uh grabbing my friend at the end and i'm like you gotta help me you got i gotta have one of these relationships Mm -hmm. with jesus and he's like laughing the whole time because he knew you know like like well there's only one reason this this guy's here because Mm -hmm. god must have you know arranged something so that he could get saved and so of course that's why i was there and he's just laughing because he's he's already like you know, excited about how I could have a relationship with Jesus. So he's like, yeah, man, that's, that's exactly why you're here. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it was, it was a fun experience. And then like from there, I've, I've, I've had so many experiences with God and I, coming from an atheist perspective. So for me, God was, you know, it was always a challenge against that God being real idea. Like it was like, Mm -hmm. okay, well, you know, this isn't, and so when he showed up and he was actually real, that mattered a lot to me. And so God knew that about me. And it, and he didn't, you know, it wasn't like a place of shame. It was just something that he was like, okay, well, I can meet with you. I can be real in your world mm-hmm. and not just religion, but I can be a, a reality for you. And yeah. And so I started to really experience him all the time. And I realized that he wasn't short on encounters. Like he had, he didn't have a small supply of encounters. He, mm-hmm. he has so many for us and we can experience him all the time. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's, that's what I started to begin to experience. So I was like, well, how, you know, Thomas has got a bad rap, you know, <laughs> you know, because like, I think like a lot of people's, you know, they always called Thomas doubting Thomas yeah. from the Bible, you know, and it's like, and, you know, doubting Thomas, uh, he did, he, he doubted, but he said, you know, Jesus, like, I will believe if, if I can, you know, if I can see and for myself. And, and so he puts his hand into the sides of our Savior, Jesus Christ. He puts him, his hands right in there. I mean, talk about an encounter. And like he is experiencing God. And then, and then his response is really significant. He says, my Lord, my God. Mm-hmm. You know, so he's let it, he's like right then and there, he's just come to the the absolute conclusion. This is real for me. Nothing can change this. Nothing can take this away. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is my experience and I'll hold it and I'll have value for it forever. That's been my experience too. <laughs> I want mm-hmm. that for everybody. I really do. Mm. Wow, wow, wow. I'm just trying to visualize, you know, the first, first moment and how it made you feel Mm. and how it changed even what you perceived before and how you are not even seeking him but he came to Mm. where you are and Mm. probably even without uh, any explanation this is Jesus for us because he's the one who left heaven his throne, his holiness to come to earth 
to us yeah. sinners is the same Jesus who we see in the Bible calling uh, Zacchaeus from a tree and Zacchaeus apparently who was perceived as a sinner a tax collect- collector that's right and choosing to go to his home to dine with him yes so uh, no it is a good uh, experience to hear from you a testimony rather that this is what has happened because i think uh, most of the time we can easily rule ourselves out yes mm-hmm. this is coming to our level because of probably where we are at or maybe the circumstances that we are, could be surrounding us so it is good to hear that he actually cares this much yeah. oh he wow. cares so much yes so it's ah. not like somebody taught you to pray and you prayed it just happened that's right <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, I hear stories of like Muslims having dreams, like mm-hmm. uh, seeing a man in white. This is like a real common experience in the Middle East, and mm-hmm. and uh, so that's been going on for you know. I mean, like Jesus is is an evangelist. Like he yeah. he has that characteristic within his you know spectrum of characteristics or whatever. But he he is an, also an evangelist, and sometimes he comes after us. I think that the the key there is that all human hearts are are desperate for Jesus Christ like every yeah. single human soul is longing for salvation and he's the only one that has it there's nowhere else to get it so it's yeah. like we're all learn, yearning for that that story to become true in our hearts and even though i didn't know anything or you know supposedly want anything i was also an extremely desperate person i was very anxious all the time i was fearful Mm-hmm. and angry i was very angry and um and when i met jesus uh i mean it was like and you know he had he had always always been there in a way and i knew that but like it was it, you know i mean it was that longing of my heart that connected with that with that was able to uh be available for that kind of experience and um so and i i have to believe that everyone's in, you know the same way i mean we watch movies or anything like that and it doesn't matter if it's a a bad movie or a good movie it's going to yeah. have the gospel in it <laughs> there's yeah. going to be a savior there's going to be a bad guy you know the mm-hmm. devil basically and then there's going to be somebody that you know often even dies and resurrects before they can you know save the day and all that kind of stuff and that's because mm-hmm. the human heart is so desperate for mm-hmm this news that this excellent good news that Jesus Christ has given everything so that they would be uh they would be able to know the father and be saved and have eternal life yeah very true very true and we've just been uh, looking at um some scriptures i'm just thinking about it now that the fact that the soul cannot rest until it finds oh. um its maker yes so will be troubled will be worried, anxious, afraid until right. we have an established relationship with Jesus. Wow, that's <laughs> And that is true. That is why um even though the world can say otherwise or maybe life generally or people can tell us otherwise, I mean that it everything is just temporary. That's right. Unless we have a relationship with Jesus. So we try to encourage ourselves and encourage everyone that we have to grow to have a relationship with Jesus and you see uh, we also said that he is the one who initiated by dying for us while we were sinners he died for us yet yeah. he is the righteous one and uh, this is a reminder to us that every time we fall he is always ready to receive us back that's right that yes. whenever we are in need uh he's not lost of options that's right <laughs> i always try to remind myself um when i feel anxious about anything i'm like lord i mean you are still in charge and in control yeah so i have that engraved in my mind like he's the king he rules and he reigns yes. you know no matter what comes my way so um probably I would like to hear um so what happened after the first encounter how did you did you look for a bible did you start doing bible lessons well like i went back to work i tried to act like it didn't happen and you know i mean i really because i'm I, at the time i'm a, i'm an academic 
Yeah. And, and the encounter, it's a long story. That's why I didn't go into detail, but the most important part really being Jesus. But uh, that, I wrote a book about it if you're interested. But like it, it in that 45 minutes of seeing in the spirit, seeing like uh, all these, all this spiritual stuff, mm-hmm. I thought because I was an academic that I had ac- that I must have some kind of problem. Like I, I was like, that was wonderful. I felt so good. But the reality is, Josh, that you probably have schizophrenia. <laughs> That's yeah. really what's going on because you're seeing things that aren't there, you know. And yeah. so I'm I'm backpedaling the best I can. But I'm also I've also had this really, you know, this experience. So it's like my spirit, man, that God is giving me and my soul just aren't lined up. And my soul is just going out there, like trying to figure out how to continue to be who I was. Mm-hmm. But that guy's already dead because I already gave my life to Jesus because I just saw him, you yeah. know. And so, like, so it's a, there's this confusing little little struggle that goes on for just a minute. And mm-hmm. uh, and then that's that's actually when I called my friend. It was maybe two weeks had gone by. I was actually uh, I was working for a really awesome. Uh, uh, like leadership organization in America, and mm-hmm. and uh, so I, it was just like the the job of my dreams, and I, I really thought so highly of it. But after I met Jesus, uh, the importance of it just fell off of me, and I just I couldn't, I just didn't have uh, like the um, you know kind of the motivation just to keep going with it. And it was so strange mm-hmm. to me because I was making great money, and I was and everything else and all these all these things that just didn't matter to Jesus at all like that I thought mattered to me and mm-hmm. um, and but God, you know he had a another path for me entirely and so for two weeks I'm working at this job that I thought was my dream job and, and I feel him calling me to that church experience and so um, so I just had to I I, I call my my friend and I said I I need to come to your to your church and and listen to you and then of course uh, uh, you know I, I had this moment where i was like oh my gosh it's a relationship with jesus it's real <laughs> you know yeah. like oh it's it's real and uh, that i i'm pretty sure that, i can't remember for sure but i think they gave me a bible and uh, maybe i had one around my my mom was uh you know a, a baptist believer and uh so she she kept the faith she prayed for me she's probably why i still why <laughs> you know what i mean mm-hmm. there's somebody praying for me somebody's praying for you you know like that's that's how a lot of things happen too that are unexplainable it's like uh, there's something there but um but i just kept having experiences so i met jesus and then um later on um as i got to know you know i got to a place be ye perfect as my father in heaven is perfect and i remember dropping the bible and saying oh okay it's over i don't know what these christians are saying or what they're doing it's all a lie none of us are perfect so we all failed you it's mm-hmm. over I, I can't be a christian and i i mean i was genuinely brokenhearted i was like god I, I really can't do this i'm so sorry that i that i wanted you know to do this and i just obviously i'm a hypocrite just like the worst of the worst and and so i just went I, you know i was on a on a hilltop and i just went <laughs> just wow. going down all the way and and uh and i remember um he brought he brought that back uh to me and like i was ready to quit but for some reason i pick up the, the bible and i started reading past that a little bit and i realized that he's talking to um kind of a like a an audience of like you know pharisees and these kind of things and he's saying like um he's letting them know that like what what you want can't be done without without me and um you know and like so jesus became the perfect that we desperately needed so that we could have a connection with with our father and so so i just remember little experiences like that that were so powerful and i mean and so like uh you know so real like god was actually real in those moments and i I remember other moments in in the word where um you know i would just connect with characters that were like uh moses you know i mean like i remember him just uh really standing out to me whenever he's he's like you because i had just experienced i had been experiencing the presence of god so as i'm experiencing the the tangible presence of god i'm like i'm thinking to myself i can't i'm i'm really dramatic at this point i'm just like a a lot of emotions are catching up with me and stuff in life and things like that Mm -hmm. so i'm just very new to i'm reading the word and i'm like and i'm thinking wow moses is is here and he says he says to god uh you know i won't i won't leave here i won't leave this tent 
without you staying with me. Yeah. And I remember feeling the same exact way. I was like, God, I can't keep going mm-hmm. if you're going to come and go in my life. Yeah. And, and so I'm like 16, 17 years into my salvation. God has not left me. He's, his presence has not gone gone in and out like I thought. I was mm-hmm. like, oh my gosh, so there's Christians out there that believe that this is a come and go experience. I'm like, I feel so bad for them. Like you're actually always here and thank God for that because that's absolutely what I need. And I'm not alone because Moses needed that too. So I realized, mm-hmm. man, Moses is like a, a brother to me. We're connected through time mm-hmm. by this shared desire that that doesn't go away. Like that I have to have a connection with, with my father at all times just to feel normal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or maybe I'm not normal, but but I just to feel like, uh, like I want to be a human being you know still it's like oh my gosh lord like i i can't even get up here i can't leave this place without you Mm -hmm. i'm I'm rambling on but i love the bible i just started to to have these personal experiences with it that's and so and there were so many more and i could keep going but uh Mm -hmm. but it was just it was so cool because that that's what kind of made me a christian is i became a part of a family Mm-hmm. Um, so there was a there was one on earth, you know, with the people, uh, my brothers and sisters in, in the faith. And then there was the spiritual family that, that I was really connecting with as well. And that was shaping me and molding me and, and really mm-hmm. confirming the things that God was doing within me. Mm-hmm. So that that it's been such a wonderful experience with God. Yeah. Wow. And um, I'm just looking back to something you said that your uh-huh. mom was a Baptist. So you were brought up in a family, in a Christian family. Yeah, I was sort of, I mean, uh, so my dad really wasn't much of a believer. I think he would have said that he was a Christian. Uh, he uh, he had HIV at an early age. And I mean, at, at early in my, when I was young. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, and this is like in the 80s. And so people were really terrified of HIV at the time. And um, and so, yeah, we had a hard uh, kind of impoverished experience here in America, which is you know nothing compared to what some other people would do, call impoverished. But um, mm-hmm. but it was uh, it was just it was difficult. We were going through a lot. It was a dark atmosphere. My dad was suicidal, mm-hmm. and eventually did commit suicide when it, when I was 15. Um, but my mom was a believer the whole time. So yeah, she mm-hmm. she she kept going to church. At nine years old, my mom asked me because she wanted my faith to be mine, which I, I do. I, I I think there's value in that. I get that. I understand what she was going for, mm-hmm. uh, and I love my mom like crazy. But she uh, she said, now, "Do you do you want to keep going to church?" And I mean, all I heard from the church, and it was probably just what my ears were open to hear was mm-hmm. hellfire and brimstone and so it was like you're going to hell there's almost nothing you can do about it um you know and that was the message that i was hearing i wasn't hearing a message of like it you'll you know god can save you and mm-hmm. um, and he wants to and he loves you and there's a relationship yeah i i wasn't hearing the message of love i was hearing mm-hmm. the message of condemnation mm-hmm. and um and i don't know what they were actually preaching but that was all i was hearing and yeah. so, uh, so when she gave me an option of whether I wanted to go to church or not at nine years old, I said, no, I'll never go back there. And she respected that and just kind of honored me through that. And of course, my life went completely off the rails, even from nine years old. I mean, there's so many things that I can tie, tie back to that, that moment that started going mm-hmm. wrong in my life. This is like a, it was like I left the covering of, of, of God. And even though I didn't understand him at the time or anything like that, there was a significance in my decision to no longer trust him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which which resulted over the years, I, I went from agnostic to to um, anti theist mostly, and then and and into an atheist as I as I went to the university and stuff. Yeah, it's challenging. It's challenging, you know, to mm-hmm. be out there and not have a relationship with Jesus because that's right. Personally, I never had the message of love as well. Mm. And now that I know that God is love, I actually wonder to myself why it was never spoken about. (laughs) But I think also times have changed, you know, and maybe this is why we have to to thus for him and seek him and get to know him for ourselves. So as you moved into this new life that 
it yeah. has brought to you you didn't even know nothing about it <laughs> but he had to take you down that path mm-hmm. uh how did you adapt you know with your friends and work i know you said that mm-hmm. um, you, are not, you didn't want to go back to work and all that but i'm just thinking how you adapted to the new calling till mm-hmm. today and maybe you have the struggles that you have had through this whole process well i think yeah christian life can be very challenging god is asking us to do something really hard he's he's calling us out into the just you know the open uh seas or whatever you know i mean it's just like there's no like real there's no ruts there's no path to our purpose it, it, our purpose belongs to us and so that that has created challenges i know in the beginning i I, I uh, basically had to leave everything. I was one of those guys that burned all my CDs and, you know, I mean, just everything that, that made up this old me, I, I, I lost my taste for it. I just, I, and I hated myself for a time, which is, I, I do not believe God wanted it. And he's really made that clear lately that, um, that even uh, that old me had value to him. And then, mm-hmm. and he's kind of reconciled some things in it. But I remember in the beginning, I was so upside down on that. I, I just like oh, I was like what a what an idiot I was <laughs> you know I was so mean to myself and I just had this fiery kind of I turned all my hate and mm-hmm. rather than than uh, uh, you know kind of you know uh, I guess regulating my hate I I just kind of got to a place where I turned it on myself and I just decided I'm, I must be the problem on every front and so that was hard mm-hmm. but I did I, I got I, that caused me to you know just basically leave all my relationships mm-hmm. and awkwardly tell people that um you know i'm not your friend anymore because i love jesus and things like that you know i just it wasn't a healthy experience yeah but i just and, and there was a part of me that just i just really needed to figure out how to uh how to be this new person that i was yeah. and um so it was a confusing thing and I, I i really could have used more community and those kind of things but um, as i started to connect with people of course uh, brought, God, you know, showed me that it wasn't just a God-shaped hole. I had a people-shaped hole too. There was mm-hmm. two holes, like in my heart, and um, the only thing that can fill, you know, the, the people is God's people, and the only thing that can fill it in the same way that the, the God-shaped hole uh, mm-hmm. is only filled by God. So, um, so yeah, there's, there's just been, it's been a journey, and then lately, <laughs> I think. Um, it's just like okay so your purpose uh, this is what i've learned is your purpose in god becomes a true north and so money for example money is such a confusing little little guy because it ends up in our life it takes a seat at our table of life and it it just gets this extremely extremely loud voice (laughs) and it tries to tell us that that we have to do this and we have to do that and um and and we become like uh enslaved to to it when we when we allow it to have that position of authority in our life and so god is like no i'm a jealous god i'm not doing that like i i am your provider i you know and and so much so that like so what i've learned even even when the money dries up or something like that is that he's still providing um and i've had lots of experiences with him like that where i remember he told me to, um, you know, oh, he's, he's just done so many interesting things with me and money. Like uh, at one point I was working uh, at uh, a 7-Eleven because God had told me to work at a 7-Eleven, <laughs> you know. And I mean, I had a I had an MBA and like I've been through like a lot, so much schooling and I've had all this experience with like leadership organizations and everything else. And I'm like, God, why would you want me to work at a 7-Eleven? But he wanted me to be there. I, you know, I still don't know every answer to it, but I remember I was making so little money and I was like, God, this is just ridiculous. And then that's where he told me, I want to teach you how to tithe and, and save. That's what, that's how he wanted me to manage my money was tithing and saving. Mm -hmm. So he's like 10% tithe, 10% saving. That was a personal thing. He just really got, he put it on me. Like, that's what I want you to do. But he did that while I was working, making less money than I had, had made in my career. And so and so I start shoving some some you know twenties, not very much money in America, into this drawer, mm-hmm. and and like and it 
so I I probably put like forty dollars U.S. dollars like in in this drawer like every week, mm-hmm. and um, for like a month, and then I pull open the drawer, and there was eight hundred dollars in the drawer, so it had multiplied like a lot, you know, and I just couldn't. I was like, God, what is this? What do you, what do you, you know? I mean, like, it just freaked me out. I was, you know, I'm an, a, an analytical person, so I'm thinking, like, where did this money come from? Did you take it from somebody? <laughs> you know, like, what in the world? Like, if I track these serial numbers down, would it, would I, you know, would I find, you know, that it, these belong to someone else or something? And um, but I was like, how did you do this? And what would, what would be, what would be the purpose? But his purpose is always the same. It's like, listen, I, you're gonna want me to be God in your life. <laughs> You don't so he want multiplied, another. didn't he? He multiplied the money. He multiplied the he money. He to do the math in my head <laughs> yeah, and I no. did it. It was only four weeks at forty dollars a week, so no, it didn't come close to eight hundred dollars. So yeah, he had uh, multiplied wow. the money, and I mean, he's just he can do whatever he wants. So you know, our God is is um, he's in charge. He's in charge, and you know, we're we're in control, which is odd. It's an odd situation because like. So, so he's completely in charge, 100%. Mm-hmm. But, but he's left us with authority on the earth, mm-hmm. and so in a way we're in control. So there's this there's this dance that we begin to learn mm-hmm. as we as we just begin to get close with the Lord, mm-hmm. that um, that he really is like if we allow him to take charge, mm-hmm. and we don't try to. Um, you know, we don't try to make up the rules or try to follow a certain path that our parents did or their parents did or, the, or that our pastor does or anything like that. And we, we just learn to have our faith like it's it belongs to us. Yeah. Then um, then we follow our path yeah. and we start to really experience the Psalms 91 covering of God like he's always protecting us. He won't let our foot dash against the stone. He's he cares. He cares for every hair on our head all of this stuff becomes actually true Mm -hmm. but it it becomes actually true when we start to uh, to realize that we were made for a purpose and and so we get to follow jesus like we get to fix our eyes on jesus we get to really spend our life uh like almost like explorers looking for where, where are you jesus and like what are you doing here and what is this new season about and what are you trying to teach me and uh, we get better and better at asking questions because they're questions of faith and not accusations and things like that where they're just like okay i know you're here somewhere mm-hmm. <laughs> but i i am not experiencing you in the way i would that would make me the most comfortable so why where are you <laughs> mm-hmm. you know and when we start asking questions like that they're so honoring to god that he can't resist and and we 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 we're doing life at that point with god and not mm-hmm. not not as all on our own because we can't do that. We're not. We're not. We're not spiritual orphans. We we belong to God. He is our Father, and we are His sons and daughters. And it's the best life when when we when we start to adventure out in that. But it can get hard. It, it can get confusing. But He's He's not authoring that. That's just us and um, you know struggling to to have the faith that that keeps us really really safe in that in that in the heart of God. Yeah, yeah. I'm just smiling because um, when we start to talk about God being a father, it really takes me on a very interesting journey. Does it? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't even want to start talking too much, but uh, the beauty of it is the fact that uh, Psalm 68 is not just another Psalm of David. It has become a reality, you know, in this life, through different kind of situations and circumstances with my own dad. Yeah. I came to embrace him as a father. Yeah, and come on. he revealed to me um, through different experiences that actually I have been your father all this time. It's awesome. I knew how to like really face him and talk to him boldly. Like I had no other option. Right. And um, since that time, I think it has really changed even many moments in my life. Because even if the experience that I had to go through was a tough one, it's not where you want to be or find yourself in. God has a way (laughs) of changing that situation and drawing us to his heart. And I'm so grateful to God for that. 
He does. He has a way. Amen. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to share with us uh, maybe some encounters that you have had. Well, I, I I want to encourage anyone listening that God is He has so much to give us, and those experiences are not uh, rare. They're not occasional. Now I've had crazy in- encounters that were like open visions and experiences where I saw angels, and um, I've I've just had a, a lot of experiences like that but even the even the everyday like encounters like with this word where i just you know you you're in a meeting and and they mention the scriptures that you were you were listening to earlier so maybe that's even happened to somebody as they're listening to this like oh that's the way I, I was thinking about that just earlier today that that to me even though it's a very small experience it, it may feel small but it's very valuable and i i just want to encourage people like you're experiencing the God of the universe. He is Mr. Eternity. He has all, everything is happening right then and there. Uh, one thing that encounters, encounter life and an encounter lifestyle has taught me is how much God wants us to be in this present moment. Like God is, I mean, it, God's presence, anytime you experience God's presence, it pulls you into the present moment. Uh, so it's a uh, way I say is God's presence is in the present. He's in the future and he's in the past. I get it. But like what he's doing is he's pulling you in, to mm-hmm. attention. And um, so there's something about being present that uh, is really important to God and really important to the encounter lifestyle. So uh, those are just little tips. But like learning to really be present in your life, to really show up mm-hmm. like I mean, so like TV, uh, you know, our cell phones, everything is teaching us to detach. I'm not against them. I use mine all the time, you know, mm-hmm. uh, but like, and I love movies. I watch them all the time. So I'm not saying don't do those things. What I'm saying is like, you've got to recognize that there's a, there's a war on your attention mm-hmm. and they're pulling you away from this present moment. This, it's a form of dissociation. We're actually being dissociated, which is um, really exhausting for our spirits and our souls. And so what God is doing is he's pulling us into this actual moment that we're in. Mm-hmm. And and in that moment, we're experiencing him. We're experiencing that safety that we need. And mm-hmm. he has resources there. Mm-hmm. So like peace, for example, peace is a powerful, infinite resource that we can get from heaven, from God's supply. Mm-hmm. And and so he, and he gives it freely. He's not holding it back from us. He's, he's pouring it out through through any willing vessel and um, when you're willing and you desire that peace then all you have to do is come into the present moment and you'll experience God and you'll experience his peace and I mean and it is a really practical helpful valuable um, thing to have is God's peace I mean if you're in a room and everybody is stressed out because of some decision that has to be made or something terrible that's happened or anything like that and you're sitting there with with peace then guess who everyone is going to look to for leadership it's going to be you (laughs) because you're carrying the peace of God. Mm -hmm. If you're carrying hope, another leadership tool or another uh, thing that can help your family or, or, um, you know, it's just like having hope can help your animals, (laughs) your your little pet or anything like that. I mean, it's hope is so necessary for everything that we, that we are in. So when we're, when we don't have enough hope, if we become present then we can experience and we can encounter God, yeah. The word, the word encounter to me, mm-hmm. I kind of broke it down and, and did like a lot of definitions in my book and those kind of things. But what it really stuck out to me about encounter was it was it was that moment when you knew that God was real. So that's that's what encounter is to me, and um, it's just that that moment, those moments when you knew that that God was really real. Mm-hmm. So the neat thing about that that definition is that you can actually look back on your past. And you can think about, oh, okay, I remember that time when I almost got into that car accident mm-hmm. and and there was something miraculous that stopped it from happening or, or um, that saved my life. Or uh, mm-hmm. I remember this, this other time when, um, you know, it, it was like, you know, it was just like on my way to the hospital or anything like that, you know, and like I was supposed to die and, and some, you know, and God helped me. Or um, I remember when my, my dad, uh, well, my personal dad, my dad passed away and then I had this comforting experience. And, and you know, I wasn't with the Lord at that time, mm. but, but I had this experience 
-hmm. and that was that was definitely God that's definitely him it wasn't something else so I started to realize that I had this and everyone does everyone has this history of experiences that qualify under that definition Mm -hmm. of encounter so it's any moment that you knew that he was real so if you look back on your past you'll realize that you've had lots of encounters and they qualify And that means that if you have a history with God, you have a future with God and you have a present moment with God. Mm -hmm. And even right now, I keep saying the word present. And I know some people are feeling it. They're like, oh, my gosh, my heart is connecting to God. Just Mm -hmm. even as I'm thinking about being present, I'm like, I'm actually here. I'm actually here. I'm actually feeling God. Mm -hmm. And that that, I just want to encourage you right now. That is real. God, God isn't holding back from us. He's just waiting for us to have the faith to say, you know what? you're real and when when we do that i you know it starts to play out i want to encourage you it's it's not just like we're deciding that god has more value than he does (laughs) yeah you can't even do that he has way more value than you can even imagine so when we decide to put our values on experiencing god then he starts to show up more and more and what it is is it's stewardship we steward we steward encounters with god Mm-hmm. And as, as we steward them, just like you plow a field, if you're sowing, you're going to reap more and yeah. more and more experiences with God. He's just like that. He, he can't hold back anything from us. Uh, and it's so much easier than we think it is. It's just so much easier. Yeah, very true. Very true. And I'm just thinking, um, you talked about sowing. I'm thinking for for us to be sowing so that means we have to be intentional Mm. you know the first time it happens when we don't really expect and then he shows up right he shows us the way Mm -hmm. so for us to be able to follow him that means we have to do something we have to put our work to it it is not going to be automatic all the time Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I think this is where now yeah. we, we come out of the magic version. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So it becomes a journey that um, whatever encounters we have, we have yeah. to seek to know him, to spend yeah. time with him, to be open to have him transform us, uh, to desire to know him, like never to have that desire to seek him leaving our hearts because... Yeah. Like for me at this season or rather every other season I realize the most important thing is to know him more and more and more. Yeah. Because the yeah. minute can you imagine the minute we just get to a point I think I've known enough. That is the day we die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To not be a very good place to be at. Yeah. I think there's no scarier scripture in the Bible that says, leave from me because I never knew you. You know, I don't know if you recognize that scripture from Revelation. I can't remember the address on it, but um, but it's so it's like, oh, my gosh, I, I want to know you or like I do. And, you know, I mean, fear isn't a good motivation for, for a relationship with Jesus. But like I, I, it is so true that what it what it begins to emphasize to us is that that there is a relationship available don't miss out on the real relationship that you can have with God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, he is real. He's thank God he's real. I mean, thank God for God, you know, he's he's actually real and that's yeah. the best part. He's he's the pearl of great price. He is the the success that we're all looking for. He's everything. One of the major things we have to do uh, is to be able to silence the voices mm. in our lives so that we can get to hear him. To silence the distractions yes and to be able to know that these are distractions so that we can have our lives formatted and focused and fixed on him <laughs> yes definitely. So, i think um before we finish mm-hmm. uh, i'd like to invite you to say a prayer to someone who's will be listening to us and would like to uh, have an encounter with jesus yes. somebody who might never have known him hopefully they can just get to experience that moment and then they have uh, this beautiful new life in Christ that never fades so you can say a prayer and then we conclude 
Well, I want to encourage you if you are struggling to experience God. Uh, my organization is that's one of the reasons we exist. That's like our cause for Christ. Our kingdom cause <laughs> is to help you. Like I was an atheist and I experienced God. You know, I mean, of course he gave that to me, but I want to encourage you, you know, come check us out at AbundantEncounters.com. Um, we want to help you have a real experience. And I believe this prayer can help you too. I'm going to pray, pray right now. And every single person listening to my voice can have a real encounter because our God is not cheap. He's not looking for some specific moment. He's always there. He's always available and he always has more than enough. So I do believe that, that you can have an experience and an encounter just listening to this prayer as I pray. And praying is powerful. That's why God tells us to do it so frequently in the, in the Bible. Mm-hmm. So, um, um, so yes, Lord Jesus, we come before you, Lord, with our with our needs. Lord, you've made us so that we would have these needs. And I thank you so much, Lord God, for the desiring heart that wants to know you, that wants to connect to the reality of who you are, that wants to experience you like Thomas did. Lord God, we all want to be able to 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 put our hands into your side uh, metaphorically, Lord. We want to experience you in a way that we walk away from and we're never the same. So Lord God, would you come and touch your people right now in Jesus' name. Lord, allow them to experience this present moment where you are so firmly located. You are in our present moment, Lord. And I just, I thank you, Lord God, for just washing us clean, making us feel brand new. Lord, uh, for helping us with challenges that we have or things that we need to overcome or let go of. Lord God, if things have, if we've begun to belong to our things, Lord God, I, I pray that you would reverse that, Lord God, and that we would be released from those bondages and, um, and any sin and anything like that. We would be released from it in Jesus' name. We would break that from us, Lord God. I thank you that, that your blood has paid it all so that we can experience you, Lord God, so that we can have a real experience with you right here, right now, Lord God. Allow allow us to just experience you. You know, I'm going to be quiet for just like three or four seconds because I believe like in that little time frame, you'll have an experience and I just want to give God some space to show up. Some of you might need to ask, what do you think of me? He may show you something. He may, you might feel his love. Uh, there might be something that you, that you hear. Or he might be reminded of a memory. He speaks every language, but often he wants to use all these images and things like that to communicate with us. So if we're open to that, then we do experience him that way. So, well, I pray that you continue to experience him throughout your day. And that um, God just completely begins to be a partner in your life, to be so close, closer than a brother. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, amen. Amen. My heart is pressed with one song that is coming. I'm going to sing it. (laughs) Wow. I just want to be where you are, dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar. I just want to be with you. Yes. Um, I believe that's the prayer <laughs> and the desire in our heart that the Holy Spirit is trying to cultivate. And we are grateful to God for giving us an opportunity. <laughs> to yes. talk about him and share of your experience with us. You are so blessed, Joshua. Thanks for having me. I believe every listener of this podcast will be blessed too when they hear these conversations. You know, yeah. we want to be reminded that we need to go back to where we belong, the heart of God. Amen. So uh, just to let all our listeners know, that all the links to Joshua's uh, website and podcasts and social media will be attached once this interview is released so that um, they can connect with you, you know, and also get to experience 
these wonderful encounters with the Lord because I believe there is a mission that God has entrusted to you. Thank you. Specifically to you. Hmm. So God bless you and God bless your ministry and we hope to see you around someday. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for this opportunity and bless you. God bless you. And to all our listeners, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Bye.